Let me tell you that electric filters for wood-powered trucks appeared in the USSR. We will look at several models. I designed and tested electric filters, including industrial ones. If anyone needs one, please contact me. Wood-fired cars require gas to be purified by cumbersome and heavy coarse and fine filters. In fact, a gasifier is not that big. Much more space is taken up by filters that cool and purify gas. The most effective is the Rashid ring filter. But its size steals space in a car, not to mention weight. Fabric filters get clogged with dust and become increasingly resistant to gas, and if they get wet, then it's a mess. Various methods of stuffing barrels give a temporary solution until the stuffing gets clogged and needs to be replaced. Imbert, the father of transport gasifiers, invented how to do without stuffing. Ancient metallurgists made filters as skewers which had to be pulled out and cleaned of the stuck tar. Another option, taken from the same metallurgists, were rashid rings, which also had to be washed from time to time. All these bits and pieces were bulky and heavy a truck gasifier with filters sometimes weighed up to half a ton. Today, we could throw out all these barrels and install a small electrostatic filter. By the way, I have already said that tarless gasifiers have been already operational for decades. They use only one fabric or hot ceramic purification filter. There is simply no, or very little, tar in the gas coming out of such gasifiers. Anyone who needs a design of such a device, my WhatsApp below the video. Meanwhile, let's continue. Gas purification with electric filters is the most effective way. A huge advantage of electrostatic filters is their minimal resistance to gas flow and 100% purification of gas from water vapor, which cannot be extracted even by cooling the gas through a radiator. The fact that particles in the gas stream are charged and settle on the electrodes was known already in the 19th century, but technology did not allow the creation of a working prototype of an electrostatic filter at that time. The American researcher Cottrell got a possibility to make it in 1906. He created the first industrial electrostatic filter. In the USSR, the first electrostatic filter was built in 1925 at the Kransny Vyborsets plant by engineer Bamakov and somewhat later in Yaroslavl by engineer Schneerson. The first electrostatic filter for transport gasifiers was built at the Kaganovich Industrial Academy. If I understand correctly, it was made by comrade I. Titov. The developers assembled and tested a series of different experimental prototypes before opting for this model. It was a tube with a pin inside. Sharp-edged discs were mounted on the pin. They are corona electrodes. A corona electrode is always negatively charged and a deposition electrode is always positively charged. The ideal corona electrode would be a thin string about 0.3 mm in diameter. The thinner the electrode, the stronger the field that electrifies the dust. The dust will stick to the walls of the tube in which the string is located strictly in the middle. I speak simple language so that the audience can understand me. Scientifically, the whole process is so complicated that no one will understand anything. The thicker this string, the worse the process goes. Here we deliberately went for a thicker electrode, because the electrode must not dissuade during driving. Although the corona electrode was made from a 20mm tube, the plates mounted to it were close to the deposition electrode, which gave a good purification effect. The electrostatic filter was tested on charcoal gas with ZIS-31 gasifier. The fuel was retort charcoal with 6% moisture content. A constant gas flow rate of 60 cubic meters per hour was kept during the tests. One cubic meter of gas contained 1.32 grams of dust. The dust was precipitated by a cyclone filter, but particles smaller than 40 micrometers were not caught. Meanwhile, a cyclone filter can cope with large amounts of dust. Electrostatic filter will not withstand an amount of dust greater than 50 g per 1 cubic meter of gas, but it perfectly copes with micron and submicron dust, as well as residual water, which reduces the calorific value of the gas-air mixture and engine filling ratio. Even if gas is cooled in a radiator, its temperature can't get below 60 degrees. According to experiments, it will always be 30 degrees higher than the ambient temperature, so the old books on transport gasifiers tell us. No matter how you cool the gas, a few tens of grams of water will still remain, it's what the electrostatic filter removes. I remember my experiments with the electrostatic filter very well. 
the gas was cooled and purified in a stuffing filter, and there was an electrostatic filter to extract tar with water at the outlet after it. Surprisingly, the gas was almost pure to the eye, with slight traces of tar, and you could hold your hand over it and feel the heat, but when the electrostatic filter was turned on, your hand was instantly burned. And very badly. The electrostatic precipitator was collecting ballast water, though there was not much of it, and this had a very strong effect on the flame heat. I even found a video of us doing this. The principle of the Tidov electrostatic filter is as follows, and this is how all such filters work. The string in the middle is the corona electrode. Looking like a thin string, it glows purple and whistles during operation. This is called a corona glow or discharge. This electrode electrifies dust, which adheres to the walls as if attracted by a magnet. Here's a video of how it happens. I made and tested my first filter about eight years ago at the Institute. It was fun. As you can see, the dust gets sticky when you connect the electricity to the walls of the tube. In the case of firewood gas, it would contain a glass of water per one cubic meter, and all of the water with tar and dust would stick to the walls of the tube and flow down. This is not happening in this electrostatic filter with dry charcoal gas, and the author complains that the dust with carbon is not kept on the walls and flies further. It sort of magnetizes and demagnetizes. If it were a wet electrostatic filter, the dust would just stick and not go further. In order to avoid carrying the carbon dust back into the gas stream, a grid was placed between the corona electrode and the tube wall. This grid is called a groove deposition electrode. A positive charge is applied to it. Once outside the grid, the dust is between the tube wall and the grid, where there is no gas flow, so the dust falls down. It cannot fly back, because of the electric field. That is, part of the dust goes to the walls and falls down behind the grid, and another part of the dust falls on the plates due to the electric field unevenness and gas swirls, and falls further down from the plates due to shaking and gravity. Apparently, there was a gap or holes between the 20 mm tube and the plates where the dust fell down into a sink not meeting the gas flow on its way because the gas was reasonably directed along the sink walls. A 20-25 watts power supply was used to feed this electrostatic filter. The corona current was 0.1 to 0.2 milliamps. A transformer converted 6 volts to 35,000 volts. Note how little energy this electrostatic filter consumed at a heavy load of 60 cubic meters of gas per hour. A thick corona electrode would not cope with gas purification, the mounted plates of thin material did all the work. Corona electrode is made of 20 mm tube, on which 6 plates with diameter of 160 mm and thickness of 0.5 mm are mounted. The precipitation electrode is made of perforated sheet 1.2 mm thick. The area of the holes is 76%. The gas is fed through tube 1 so that it does not meet with the dust falling from the discs from above and does not carry it upstream. The dust falls into the sink, it is in the middle of the picture, and the gases pass, as I understand, along the circumference, it is shown by number 2. The gases come out of there, sticking to the walls and not passing through the middle. There is a hatch at the bottom of the filter where dust can accumulate for 15 to 20 hours. It is cleaned by opening the cover. Bench tests in the laboratory showed the viability of this electrostatic filter. Then, road tests of a gasified truck started. Later, Tidoff filed two more patents for electrostatic filters, but I will tell you about this in another video, in the second part.